benefit. So anyways, we are extremely pleased to have Jim Walsh. Jim? Thanks, you guys. I, um, I, was, I was working on a column uh, for the Southwest Journal in January, and it was, and, and I'll get to that, but um, the, the way this came about is I contacted Gary and folks at the church here because I think it's an idea that is worth, and a word that is worth having out there right now. The word, the word is empath, E-M-P-A-T-H. And we'll get to that, but um, just sort of as a, as a foundation for this, um, thinking about this, um, this idea of, of empath, uh, I saw Adrian Brody's new film, uh, which is called Detachment. And it opens March 16th uh, across the country, but we dialed it up on demand. And it's a story of a teacher in Brooklyn it's just a, a brutal situation. He's a substitute teacher for these high school kids. And he's a, he's a lifelong substitute teacher. He doesn't want to commit. He doesn't want to, you know, as it turns out, there's a reason for that. Uh, his mother committed suicide when he was a kid. When, when he was a child, he saw it. And he has basically spent his life distancing himself from students, lovers, friends, family, and um, making his way that way. And it works for a long time, obviously. In the film, he's really, really, um, he, he's impassioned about his work, but he's very distant with people. Um, and his character name is Henry Bather, I believe. And one of the taglines for the film is, Henry Bather is in all of us or is all of us. And I think that's true to some degree. Um, I think that life whittles us down and uh, the pains that we have and the joys that we have are reflected in kind of a, there, there's a, a coarsening of the soul. You know, you get hurt, basically. Life hurts. And so you develop mechanisms for getting through this life so as not to get hurt, which is impossible. But I think we've gone too far as a species. <laughs> uh, I think that, the Adrian Brody uh, depiction of this man uh, is the extreme to this, um, of not being open-hearted, of not being trusting, of not being loving for a variety of reasons. And I can see everyone out there taking off your own reasons, you know, how and, and why you need to have, you know, shut down your heart a little bit. You know, I have mine. Um, you, if you can name them. You can philosophize them away. You can pray them. You can meditate. You can love them. They're there. The other part of this detachment that I sense in the species at the moment is technological. Because we are so connected to each other technologically, be it texting each other or, or be on Facebook or cell phones, because of that, I, there, there is also a, a thick skin that comes up by the use of technology itself, right? I mean, it, it, it actually, as, as much as it provides, this is a, a, a cliche at this point with all of this technology, but as much as it provides uh, communication, it also is a gauze between it. Because it feels like, it does not feel like this right now. You know? We are interacting you know, warmly. And we don't have to really do this, you know, because we can go do our, you know, we have other connections waiting for us right now in our pocket, 
outside. We don't have to do this, but we should. And that's just, I mean, I think it's a crucial moment in the species, frankly. Um, and that's where this column came from, here in the empath. What if 2012, with all this chaos, with all this change, what if it really is about the species going, okay, hang on, you know, we're distant enough from each other, you know. Um, I know a lot about this because I've spent my life writing and singing to people and feeling uh, feelings. Those are eroding. They are. You know it. Maybe it was, you know, let me read you something. So this is what I wrote in, the, uh, in this column that I'm talking about. Uh, this was in January, and um, uh, two people uh, close to a lot of people died. Marv Davidov, the great uh, freedom fighter and peace activist, died uh, the same weekend that um, our friend Adam Levy's son killed himself. Adam Levy is a songwriter and musician in town, and, and his 21-year-old son took his life in New Jersey. And the reaction was on Facebook uh, with, with both of these events was so visceral um, coming from basically all these artists and songwriters. And I was very grateful for it, and this is what I wrote. Um, the truth is, the beauty expressed was a shocking alternative to what passes for public discourse these days, and a reminder of the goodness of the human soul at its purest. Many of the people who gathered around the Davidoff and Levy families were artists, musicians, writers, poets, and other thin-skinned and tender-hearted beings. Accustomed as, as they are to working with deep feelings of love and loss, they were able to buck the modern-day trend of stuffing or shouting over emotions and get on with the work of being empaths. Empath. The word derives from the English word empathy, not sympathy, which itself was first coined at the surprisingly late date of 1909. Pop culture introduced the idea with the Star Trek episode, The Empath, 1968. It's horrible. It's maybe the worst Star Trek episode ever. I've watched it. For research on this cover. A muddled theological parable, complete with Captain Kirk crucifixion scene, got his shirt off. He's very sweaty and he's on basically a crucifix. It's awesome. <laughs> Centered around a willowy, willowy cre creature nicknamed Jim. It fits Jim. She must be an empath, Dr. McCoy tells Kirk. Her nervous system is so sensitive and so highly responsive that she can actually feel our emotional and physical reactions. They become part of her. In the real world, author and Dr. Judith Orloff wrote, empaths are highly sensitive, finely tuned instruments when it comes to emotions. They feel everything, sometimes to an extreme, and are less apt to intellectualize feelings. Intuition is the filter through which they experience the world. Empaths are naturally giving, spiritually attuned, and good listeners. If you want heart, empaths have got it. The trademark of empaths is that they know where you're coming from, just in time. As American culture continues to course in our collective soul, as the information stream becomes a white water raft ride that bombards with stimuli, opinions, screaming talking heads, and non-listeners, one could do worse than follow the path of the empath, who values above all else feeling, deep emotion, and staying in touch with the self and therefore all humanity via meditation, prayer, and creativity. <coughs> so I wrote this column, and a lot of people said, you know, they were like, wow, I finally have a name for myself. I'm an empath, which is hilarious in and of itself because it's, you know, it seems like people are always looking to label themselves something. You know, I'm, you know, I'm screwed. You know, I'm, you know, 
but I'm an empath, so I got that going for me. Um, so anyway, it was amazing, this, this, uh, uh, this outpouring of love uh, for the Davidovs and the communities that just, and it was just pure love, and it, and it just struck me that, you know, that like everyone here, I mean, preaching to the choir right now, because by, you know, dint of you being here, you are empaths, you know. So, when we walk out there, and the, the people walk by us on the lake path, zombified, and not, you know, really uh, looking to make contact, or spread the love, or be human, you feel a little weird. You feel like the world is robotic. And that's why we empaths have to, you know, it's kind of like in praise of thin skins, you know, stay that. Because the world at every turn will go, you know, dead, dead, dead. Am I right? Right? Or am I wrong? Am I talking, am I insane? All right. I would love to hear what you had to say on this, because we were talking in the, in the back. And if you have anything to say about it, that would be lovely as well. And if anyone has any thoughts on this, because I'm going to throw this out, because I would love to hear what your reaction is to that idea of, of uh, you know, the name of the, the I don't know if I, I mentioned this, but the Adrian Brody film is, is called Detachment. So we're talking detachment and empathy, certainly, but towards, you know, year of the empath. Um, I would love to hear what you had to say about uh, your friend. Because it's a, it, it's, a real, it's a real state of being. Well, I was telling Jim that uh, my partner Cindy and I found a rock up in northern Minnesota by uh, uh, Duluth in a state park called Jay Cook. This rock still had uh, paint on it. And apparently, we picked it, well, she saw it and we picked it up. And the moment we picked up this rock, we started having feelings of anger, destruction, death. Revenge. And after about two hours of being in each other's throats, I finally decided there's I finally realized there's something wrong here. We're under the effect of something. And we did rituals in order to clarify this this particular rock. It was uh, I my guess that it was part of a tomahawk and it still had colors in it, black, red, yellow, and white. Um, and uh, we did ritual on it in order to uh, neutralize the effect. Um, took it home and finally gave it back to somebody who belonged to the Ojibwe tribe. And the way that I understand this is this, that area had been, in many areas of Minnesota by the way, had been, had been the site of a lot of fights between the Ojibwe and the Dakota. All the way from, you know, way up north, Bilac, to down here, almost down here, uh, by the, uh, you know, a little bit north of here. So there were a lot of wars, some of them very extreme, and basically we're picking up on something that had happened in the past. And I think this can happen to anybody who is sensitive. Uh, I myself pick up, you know, sadness from certain situations from certain people, but, but I don't normally pick up anger, but this rock was so strong that we actually did, that I actually picked it up myself also, and my partner did, who is even more empathic than I am. And I think that can happen. Um, Jim, I would like to just mention one thing, for example, I think, um, it's kind of different, it has nothing to do with this particular thing, but I, it's kind of the opposite. I think that when people have all these cellular phones and all these communication things, they're actually turning themselves off. Their brain waves actually turn into a sleep state. So it actually is not communication at all, it's actually lack of communication. Oh. But that's something I'm interested in sideline on. The opposite of what we picked up, the rock. By the way, this rock was given back to the Ojibwe tribe, and they now use it as a positive um, catalyst for positive rituals. So that's what I had to say. I mean, imagine that. I mean, the, the power of that rock and that empath coming together. But if we're all empaths and we're walking around in this world, talk about that if you would. And just raise your hand because 
I want to know if I'm alone in this. 